You see, God wants to speak to us, but first he has to quiet the confusion. We have to allow him to quiet the noise. Amen. And that's why he said, be still. In order to hear God, you have to first get quiet. Amen. You have to lay down that, that mind that's just churning with all kinds of, what do we do here? What do we do there? How are we going to do this? And just lay it down. Amen. Just lay it down. Hallelujah. Why? Because God is more than faithful. Amen. When Jesus was on the cross, I'm sure he had a thousand demons screaming in his mind. Amen. Or when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, I'm sure he had a thousand demons just screaming as loud as they could scream. Don't you think so? Because they didn't want him to go through with it. Amen. Hallelujah. But in the midst of it all, he could say, what? Well, not my will, but thy will be done. In other words, he could get to that point where he, had, he remained in peace. He stayed in peace. Amen. He stayed in the will of God. He stayed knowing that God is faithful. Amen. And so it is that we might have all this great turmoil that's churning about us, around us, or churning in our mind. And all God wants to say to you today is to be still. Amen. Stop. Amen. Stop. Stop what you're doing. Stop what you're listening to. Amen. Allow me to speak to you. Hallelujah. That's how God leads his people. That's how the Holy Spirit leads. Amen. He does it from a place of quietness. It does it. He does it from a place of quietness. The devil likes confusion, loudness. Um, and I'm not great at the music. But <laughs> I just struck my mind. Anyway. But just a lot of noise, a lot of things going on around and in the mind. And, and so if God were to speak to you in that state, you wouldn't hear it. It would just be another voice in the midst of all that confusion. But God did speak. Jesus did speak. He said, peace, be still. Amen. Hallelujah. Psalm 46.10, and most of you could probably quote it, it says, be still and know that I'm God. No more about you. See, God in this hour is asking us to draw close to him. Amen. He is seeking after us. He's searching for you. Can you believe that? Why would he do that? Because he loves you. Amen. And he wants the best, his best for you. Amen. He wants you to have joy. He wants you to have peace. Amen. He knows that, that you will encounter his circumstances, but in the midst of all that circumstance, you will be grounded in his voice. Amen. You'll be grounded in, in trust in him. Amen. Grounded by the relationship. All this work that God wants to do in us, all this work, you know, G, uh, Jerry's been hitting the flesh hard and it's good but all that has to be you know you take a plant you know when they grow plants they put them in a little greenhouse you know they call it a hot house you know and they, they put that seed in there you know it's amazing you go to Lowe's in the springtime and, oh there's all these plants well they just didn't bring all those plants you know they didn't grow them all. they put the seed you put it in the ground they put it in a nice warm environment amen and that caused the seed to grow and that's so it is with dealing with our, allowing God to deal with the flesh, putting us in a position, we have to put that in, we have to put our spirit, put our, our, our spirit man or our life in the hot house, in the greenhouse, amen? And allow God to hit it with sunshine. That's his love, amen? And cause it to grow and water it. And then, you know, they don't just take those plants out of that hot house and throw them out into the cold. You know that, right? They don't just do that. What would happen? It would just wilt and disappear. He's, they've got to open the door. They have to open the, the windows or the doors and allow a little cool air to come in. What does that do? It hardens the plant. Amen. It gets the plant used to it. So in order to, to get the life to change, God's got to put us in the hothouse. Amen. What is that? That's relationship. That's seeking after God. That's hearing his voice. You know, he seeks us. He draws us close. Do you hear it? Do you feel it? 
Do you feel him in your life? Do you feel him tug on your heartstrings? Do you hear him say, come on now, spend some time with me? Amen? Just get away from everything. Be still and know that I'm God. Be still. Amen? And it's those times that prepares us for what's ahead. It's those times in that relationship, in that relationship with Jesus that prepares us for the work that he's about to do. Mm -hmm. Amen? Because if you don't have the relationship, when you get to the test, it's going to be difficult. Mm -hmm. Because you hadn't spent time in the hothouse. Amen? You hadn't spent time in the greenhouse. But if you spend time in the greenhouse, amen, you spend time in that relationship, amen, you allow him to, you know, you just say no to the world and it's all Jesus today. Or it, this moment, it's all Jesus right now. You kick everything to the side. Paul said in, in 2 Corinthians 11, 2, and he was talking about the Corinthians, but I'm going to use it just a little bit differently. I used it up in slime. It says, for I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy. God is jealous. He was saying that of the Corinthians, but I can see that's true of God. That he is jealous over us. Amen? God is jealous over us. Amen? Amen? He wouldn't have sent his son if he wasn't. Amen. He wouldn't have sought after us. Amen. He wouldn't keep prodding you. <laughs> Instead of Saul, you know, why kick his you? Why, why do you kick against the pricks? You know, somebody was pricking him. <laughs> that was Saul before he came Paul. <laughs> Amen. So in other words, you know, there he is. God is there, and he's drawing you. Give into it. Amen. Be loud. Why don't you be jealous over God? Amen. God is jealous over you. God is